Constipation is a social disease which can seriously affect the patient's quality of life. Currently, with regard to pathogenesis, it is possible to distinguish slow transit-induced constipation and the obstructed defecation syndrome. Up to now, ODS has been defined in various ways and regards a number of symptoms in varying patterns and intensity due to anomalies, difficulties, or impossibility of expelling the feces. Currently, three main factors are distinguished in the development of ODS. Rectocil and intussusception are considered to be responsible for mechanical obstruction. Paradoxical contraction of the puborectalis muscles and the anal sphincters are known to be the main functional causes. Enterocil and the genital prolapse are considered as mechanical extra-rectal factors. It remains to be clarified whether the anatomical and functional alterations of the fascia and pelvic muscles are the cause or effect of the pathological process. Many alterations of the pelvic organs and their supports are held responsible for ODS. But since these are very widespread and often non-symptomatic pathologies, it is not clear when and by what mechanisms ODS occurs. The frequent, complex pelvic pathologies are very often described as an association of several pathologies. We believe that this complexity means that there is something that is still beyond our comprehension. In order to provide a contribution, at the St. Elizabeth Krankenhaus Hospital in Vienna, we have undertaken anatomical, clinical, and instrumental studies which will help to characterize and understand ODS much better in the future. Ultrasound mapping confirms these alterations of the muscular layers of the rectum and defecography shows the pathologies of the pelvic organs. Nevertheless, the common examinations are not sufficient to fully clarify the mechanisms determining ODS, and the significance of the morphological abnormalities is not very clear. We have developed an original computer re-elaborated synodefecography technique allowing for the dynamic study of organ profile during defecation and of the deep pelvis, which can be easily analyzed. With it, we examined about 1,200 patients who reported defecation disorders and recto-anal pathologies. In these patients, the X-ray examination of the empty rectum with barium coating shows a constant anatomical alteration consisting of a variable prolapse degree. This prolapse tends to obstruct the anal canal. Dynamic defecography shows that with rectum full and under straining, this prolapse distends and then recedes automatically with three basic mechanisms that can integrate with varying prevalence. Can extend transversally forming a rectocil. Can extend longitudinally by the hyperdescent of the perineum. These two mechanisms are prevalent in women, and this can explain the high frequency of the rectocil in women. Finally, prolapse can be reduced by outward expulsion. This mechanism is prevalent in males where mucohemorrhoidal prolapse is a more frequent and common phenomenon. These mechanisms work only if the rectum is capable of creating an endoluminal pressure gradient higher than the residual closure pressure of the anal sphincters. This pressure occurs if the rectal walls offer valid mechanical resistance to a certain degree of filling. The extreme thinning or disappearance of this structure leads to the incapacity of the rectum to support the pressure necessary for the defecation. The clinical result is that the patient is unable to evacuate and increases straining. The increase of abdominal pressure by straining leads to the descent of the pelvic peritoneum, 
shown in the Douglas hyperdescent or endorosil formation. The pelvic compression is transferred to the rectum. The effect is an extrinsic compression of the rectum that is transferred as endoluminal pressure in order to defecate. Furthermore, the reduction of pelvic space in the cranial caudal direction induces the rectum to form multiple prolapses, especially posterior, or to invaginate. Rectal invagination with blockage of the proximal rectum forms a cylinder closed on one side cranially so that the endoluminal pressure directs the fecal mass towards the open end. Furthermore, the progression of invagination pushes the feces outwards. High invagination is thus functionally useful to defecation, though it induces emptying in several times of the rectosigma. When invagination becomes rectoanal, either complete or partial, it is the main mechanism of fecal obstruction. The rectocil is, however, the frequent cause of excessive residual feces. Patients with mechanical obstruction may show constant anatomical alteration, also observable when they are at rest. This is the prolapse of the distal rectum frequently associated with thinning of the muscular tunica. We assumed that the resection of the prolapsed distal rectum might represent a surgical treatment that is rational and effective in the syndrome of mechanical obstruction to defecation. The hypothesis was that if our pathogenic interpretation of ODS was correct, we would have achieved the restoration of the rectal anal flow the thickening of the rectal walls with reacquisition of normal capacity and compliance. The anatomical correction of the rectocil with regression of the posterior colpocil if associated. From the functional point of view, the removal of the mechanical obstacle should have enabled the patient to sufficiently evacuate the rectum with reduction of straining and regression of the dynamic changes of the pelvic organs and the pelvis, which, as we have said, can be observed only under intense straining.